Quick Diz News is part of the Quick Diz Takes family of podcasts. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Hello, I'm Michael Eisner. <laughs> Oh boy! What's up, guys, and welcome to the Quick Diz News episode number 10. I am your host, Tim LeBeau. Here with me, as usual, is Mr. John Castano. Hello. And Mrs. Sarah Castano. Hey, howdy, hey. Please like, share, and subscribe. And leave a review on Apple Podcast if you get a chance. We really appreciate it. And without further ado, we will get into this week's quick mentions. So we do have some more entertainment. Disney announced mm. they would be bringing a new After Hours Halloween party, Disney After Hours Boo Bash, to the parks this fall. Magic Kingdom will host what Disney park goers are calling the new Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party on select nights between August 10th and October 31st. Guests will be able to enter the park as early as 7 p.m. on nights they are running. The specially ticketed event will include Halloween themed cavalcades, candy stops, character sightings such as Dr. Facilier, Captain Barbosa, and then lighter characters like Chip and Dale or Goofy. It will have special performances by the Cadaver Dans. Lower wait times for attractions such as Haunted Mansion and Space Mountain, themed food and beverages that you could purchase, special decor, lighting, and music as well. Tickets are going on sale next month, so if this is something that interests you, check back on the Disney website for more information about specific dates as well as the ability to purchase. That sounds pretty much like Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, the yep. new name. Mm hmm. 2.0. Post-COVID. I'm not sure there's much to say about it. Additionally, in our quick mentions, Disney sent out an email to all current annual pass holders earlier this week, stating that beginning this fall, they will no longer be offering the complimentary magic band for past purchases and renewals starting August 16th of this year and beyond. Disney stated in the email that as more Disney World annual pass holders become aware of the offerings of Magic Mobile with its conveniences, they would no longer be offering those free Magic Bands as part of their perks as an annual pass holder. Disney did update their policy on the website as well. Annual pass holders can still purchase a Magic Band should they so choose to wear them. They will still honor and activate bands that you currently have. So nothing changes there. Earlier this year, they did also stop offering the complimentary magic band for guests staying on site. It is now a $5 purchase for those basic bands that were originally complimentary. And I can and, tell you, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, and I can tell you from this past trip, I just got back from, it was strange a little bit for the first time not having a magic band. I was walking around. I, I have magic bands. I did not bring one or I was only there for two days. So I just used the, the little park ticket card thingy they give you which is whatever i guess i gotta use my phone too but uh yeah it was a little weird but i don't know i finally decided to buy one when we were there last time with you guys i decided to finally buy my own custom star wars one and now <laughs> we're not using magic bands anymore so i don't know and i'm sure they're gonna get rid of them completely at some point but... right now did you get the paper ticket or was it the plastic ones it was plastic just curious. I should have saved it. So I could have showed everyone, but I did not. <laughs> but it was fine. I mean, magic bands are a little bit easier because they're on your wrist, but you just yeah. stick in your wallet and whatever. Yeah. Easy peasy. Last up on our quick mentions, the original Sanderson sisters took to Twitter to confirm the coming of Hocus Pocus 2, summoning each other with memorable quotes from the original film. Reprising their roles in the sequel, Bette Midler called to her sisters. Sarah Jessica Parker is ready to run amok. And Kathy and Jimmy... And Kathy and Jimmy can already smell children. 
Hocus Pocus is, I'm sorry, Hocus Pocus 2 is slated to arrive fall 2022 on Disney Plus, which they also promoted via Twitter. Can't wait. I'm willing to wait for it, but I can't wait. It's coming. We're just, we're making, just gonna throw references in every news show now. Tim. I'm making some trips to Salem this year, hopefully, because they're supposedly filming. So, and you know what Johnny will be doing up there in Salem? <laughs> He'll be running a little muck around those sets. <laughs> we'll be That'd creeping cool from up. afar. It'll be cool. Yeah, I'm excited. It only took 30 years to get a sequel. Well, it's better than the 300 years it took to get the original story. <laughs> There's a way to look at it. So we have a couple of updates, too. Um, the three Caballeros animatronics have returned to Epcot's Mexican Pavilion ride, the Grand Fiesta Tour, after being fully restored. According to social media sources, the animatronics have been rebuilt from the ground up using the latest technology to replace components originally made by hand almost 50 years ago. They do look a lot more modern. I saw some pictures earlier this evening. They don't look as fluffy as the originals were, <clears throat> but it does. it is nice to have them back in that ride, I'd say. Well, they move, right? Mm-hmm. So that's, oh, that's pl the plan. That's the bonus. Well, it's the best part of the ride. So uh, First, <laughs> it's, the to only, be back. it's the only noteworthy part of the entire ride. In my personal opinion. No, it's I, fact. <laughs> yeah, I spoke to, I, I did an interview that will be on the channel later this month uh, to someone that loves that ride and thinks there's more than just one highlight to that ride. And then I met somebody in Epcot who also thinks that's one, who also considers that to be one of her favorite rides. So now I know two people that have the three caballeros in their top three of Epcot rides, of course. I never thought I would meet one. I have now met two within two weeks of each other. So Fantastic. maybe I'm missing something. Maybe Coco shouldn't come in. I don't know. Mm. I still want Coco. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think it's time to move on. Soren becomes the latest attraction to reduce physical distancing within the parks. Earlier today, guests were able to load all seats, no longer separated by plexiglass dividers with those booster seats attached to them in order to separate parties. So this allows for more guests to load the ride with cast members leaving one open seat between guests. So since larger parties can be accommodated, more people can load the ride and guests can kind of move along a little faster. So plexiglass and other physical distancing markers, however, do remain in place throughout the queue. So in case you missed it, other attractions that have already relaxed their physical distance guidelines, Tower of Terror is loading every row and has removed the plexiglass. Splash Mountain is now seating parties closer together and Rise of the Resistance now has separate parties seated together. It's no longer one party per ride vehicle. So we're on our way. If you can get on Rise of Resistance, which I did not, buy, mind you. Oh, no. The new system's rough. Bad day. I was right on top of it. I have experience. I've done it before, and I did not get on. Now you can't brag you're 100% anymore. Yeah, I think, didn't you warn me about that? Didn't you have a problem the first time? Hmm. Because you really have to start, like, you got to start like three or four minutes before seven o'clock, and then I don't know, it's all hmm. off Wi Fi. Make well, sure I, off, I stood off of Wi Fi because I remember, kind of remember that from the first time, but it didn't. I mean, I'm just going, I'm refreshing like crazy, and it's not even giving me a link to touch to get in. And, and then it's it, weird because you don't know which seven o'clock is it seven o'clock by the iPhone standard or by your watch or by their there to you don't know which when it hits seven what seven o'clock really is i don't know but all i know is it was like five seconds went by and i was not yeah i was done yeah which i wasn't i've been on three times i was okay with the idea that, of me not getting on i just wanted to get my own on and did not happen but did go on mickey minis and that was awesome yeah it's awesome yeah i think it's one of my favorites now Part of me wishes it was more of the classic Mickey and Minnie. I get why it's the new version, but 
I do kind of wish it was the classic Mickey and Minnie little. And we did ride uh, Smuggler's Run. And we got both um, containers of coeds. So we did better than when we did it. I guess that's a plus. Oh, and I went to the baseline tap house. Did you get the flights? I did. Nice. Yeah, that, that was good. That, yeah, that, that place is good. So we went to Hollywood Studios Day 2 First Park, and we stood there for from 9 to 2, and we did nothing but ride Mickey and Minnie's once and drink. That's a solid day. And then went over to Magic Kingdom after that. <laughs> and then back to Epcot for the rest of the festival, which was awesome. Flower and Garden was awesome. So. I was scoping out some of your pictures. Yeah, yeah. I put a lot on Instagram. What's up, guys? It's Tim. Just here to remind you to check out our new website, quickdiztakes.com. We cover everything Disney, from our newest videos to our newest podcast, blog posts by contributors, and much more. And while you're there, do not forget to subscribe for the latest notifications on when new blog posts are posted and new videos go up. Of course, check out our YouTube page, Quick Diz Takes, and our Facebook page, Quick Diz Takes, along with Twitter, at Quick Diz Takes. For me and at Palm Tree Scook for Sarah, Instagram at Quick Diz Takes Tim and at Quick Diz Scook. And of course, if you like this, please like, share, and subscribe with friends. Thanks for listening. And now back to the show. Our big story this week. So Disney announces another adjustment to their mask wearing policy. So the day after we recorded uh, our podcast reporting out that the CDC announced vaccinated people could, quote, abandon mask wearing guidance while outdoors, Walt Disney World Resorts announced their relaxation of mask wearing policies as well. We had previously reported out that the Disney World website updated their policy on physical distancing and their new mask policy goes along with that as well. According to Walt Disney World's website, the resorts updated their policy to the following. Mask wearing is required upon entering and throughout all attractions, all theaters, including theater entrances, all transportation, including transportation entrances, all indoor locations, including restaurants, except when actively eating or drinking while stationary. The update comes where mask wearing is now optional. Outdoor common areas within the parks, in resorts, and pool decks. So they do make it a point to make guests aware that face coverings are not permitted while experiencing water slides or in the water. Clearly there is a safety concern about having a wet mask up against your mouth and nose, making it unsafe. So I'm a little concerned that they had to put that disclaimer. I'm hoping that's a preventative thing and that people aren't actually wearing their masks in a pool. I wouldn't put it past anyone. You never know. It's one of those rules you wonder, like, are they doing this because they know someone will try it? Or is this in place because someone has done it? I promise you someone's done it. <laughs> There's too many guests that have gone there that have tell me that someone has not attempted that already. Right. So it is nice to see, you know, we do have the relaxing of physical distancing. It's no longer the six feet, except, you know, in restaurants where people have the opportunity to take their mask off. But now we're starting to see the masks are off in common areas, just walking through parks. It's optional. It's not saying do not wear them. So if you don't feel comfortable, by all means, please feel free to keep your mask on, but it is optional for fully vaccinated and unvaccinated guests. It's getting pretty lax. Mm -hmm. I was just there, I can tell you. It was getting pretty lax. Yeah, you left the day that they announced it, actually, right? Yeah, I got there. The first day I was in the parks was the day we could do it. Mm -hmm. So it was cool. It was good. I mean, no one was up in no one's in any you know up in anyone's business or anything. So you get off, you know, you're in the park, you take your mask off, and no one's even near you. So and then you put them on. You put them on when you go on a ride. I say when we went in July, it was we had the whole park to ourselves. It would have been fine for us to take it off. I mean, we didn't know as much then as we do know now, but. It's one of those things where now that crowds are increasing a little bit, I think more people, some people are going to be more hesitant 
about taking it off in common areas as capacity increases a little, I think. Yeah, and I think uh, capacity is going to increase very soon mm -hmm. within the next week or two. So, and then, I mean, we're still loading rides the same way when I was there, all that stuff, but. You know, the lines will seem shorter <laughs> when they finally put the three foot distance. Hopefully, some shows open. Get a few more restaurants open, and it won't seem as busy, too. I guess. Get those shows. Get Casey's Corner open. That's all I, I want. You were gonna bring it up. Yeah, it wasn't open yet. <laughs> I knew it. I want that open. They do have very good fries. I went to Space Mountain when I first got to the Magic Kingdom. It was a 40-minute wait. I think I was on it in 13 minutes. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Some stuff. Yep. But there, because they, they, you know, they want you to go somewhere else. But flight of passage, fifty minutes was about thirty. Yeah, everything's definitely inflated. Pirates was like thirty-five, and I would say it was about thirty-five. Splash Mountain was thirty fifty. It was thirty-six. I timed it. Big Thunder Mountain said twenty-five. It was like. I'm not even sure I stopped walking until I got to the ride. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, it moved quick. So, I think that's all I did at the Magic Kingdom. We did. We were only there a few hours. Oh, Haunted Mansion. Haunted Mansion was 35. It was more like 20. So everything was pretty much less. It does mm -hmm. make me wonder, though. Like, they, can, they discontinued the Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. It makes me wonder if they had kept that even just until kind of COVID was, I don't want to say more stable, but it moves people through the parks. It keeps people out of lines for rides. It would have been something else to kind of, not that it took a ton of people either, but to kind of keep guests out of lines and not like, do you know what I mean? Just kind of yeah. a, a holder. Yep. Because the parks still seem crowded because there's no shows. Right. There's nothing to eat those large crowds. So my aunt's like, oh, this isn't 35%. And I was like, yeah, I was reading that it, it is. And it's just, you know, I mean, is, you'd be amazed how many people are off at those shows throughout the course of a day. Right. And without that happening, your uh, seems full. So, yeah. anyway. Hopefully, hopefully, all this is, uh, got, you know, going, uh, you know, we can get characters back and all you know just i think that i don't know i think a lot of stuff's just going to happen sooner than later yeah sooner than i thought sooner than i think we all thought even like a month ago on this channel yeah then, I, didn't, <laughs> I, I think i didn't think i thought disney would kind of let universal and sea world maybe do it for a couple weeks see how that went and then when they announced it basically that night right it was surprising. Yeah. And with certain states opening up a while back already, and they're not having problems anymore, really. No, and I guess they say that Orlando, where Orlando is, they're, 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 you know, they're pretty good in that county with cases and vaccine rates and all that stuff. They're doing pretty good. So that's good for the people, you know, that are working there. I went to, I landed in Tampa. My dad lives in, the, we went to Top Golf, which is, I'm sure people have seen it on different, vloggers vlogs but um yeah i walk in and uh there's just almost everyone just walking around no masks so it's happening in a lot of places certain stores i i saw i think it's like walmart costco i don't know there's like six stores i think nationwide who have dropped their mandate that you're required to wear masks in their stores but the signage does say that you still have to follow your state's guidelines. So for example, in Massachusetts, you're still required to wear a mask, even though Walmart does not require it, the state requires it. So you have to wear it in the store. So Makes but sense. there is this stuff happening around. Yeah. But. Cause I was in Walmart. I went to Walmart today. I walked in and they took the sign down that says everybody is required to wear masks, but everybody was wearing masks. There was one person and it wasn't, but that was in the Rhode Island. So I don't know. Actually, I don't know what, I don't know. We're too close to both states, so it's tough to remember what does. Right. Yeah. I don't but know. I, I think it's going to dwindle quick, though. 
It's just one of those things where like someone gets it going, like that one person, and then yeah, but next I time mean, yeah. two people, three people, and then it just yeah, it's no both. I think Donald. by the end of, by by the end of this month with Memorial Day and all that, I think that's Memorial Day is going to be like that. I think the the cutoff. It's going to be the memorial. Everything. It's going to be the memorial for masks. Yeah, that's what I think. Probably that weekend, and it's just done. Yeah, it makes sense. And so by the time you guys get down there, you'll be all set. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we can. I don't know what we can do. I mean, I'm not even mad just having a lot of areas. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not even mad about most of the rides are air conditioned or if they're not, you're moving quickly outside because it's a roller coaster. You know, it's something you're you're cooled off. Yeah, it'll be definitely different from the last time. I mean, yeah, it was hot, but it was, you know, you could tolerate with the mask on and now it's just going to be whatever. You know, right. like you said indoor. You're only you're wearing you're wearing masks basically. Where there's, there's shade or air conditioning, mm-hmm. basically. And who knows? Maybe by then, who knows? We might not even have to. Right. I got a feeling. When you going? Uh, August. Oh, yeah, the, I got a feeling. First week of August. I got a feeling you're gonna be in the clear, which is good. Anyway, all right, we're done, right? This is it. It was a big story. All right, that's the news for the week. So we will talk to you next week and we are getting out of here. Oh, does Elsa have anything to say? Yeah, I notice Elsa is making an appearance now. Was she jealous of Statler and Waldorf? No. Um, okay. Arya put Elsa there. She has no opinion on anything. <laughs> no. She wants Disney to let it go with the mask. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, I think that's about yeah. <laughs> I forgot about Elsa back there. Anyway, all right, let's get out of here. We'll talk to you guys next week. Later. Bye.